I started singing actually as a member of the church choir at home um, in a little place called Blundell Sands, um, which is a little village by the sea next to Liverpool. Um, I sang also at school where I was gradually given lots of solos. And then when I was 16, I joined the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic Choir and semi-chorus, um, which was my first experience of proper professional level singing, um, doing huge concerts with sort of professional soloists of an international standard. And then um, post-school, I went up to Cambridge University and initially was a choral scholar. I went up to Cambridge University and read law, although I was also a choral scholar. Um, and although I did stay as a choral scholar for a year, um, very quickly it became evident that my voice was a bit big for the choir, so they let me go. I went down the legal route um, and eventually became a barrister working from London Chambers. Um, but all in, in the back of my mind, always there, was maybe one day I might like to see what's out there for me as a singer. So after some consideration, I applied to the Royal College of Music um, where my teacher, Lillian Watson, was at that time teaching from. Um, and they offered me a place, and I then took what I believed to be a year's sabbatical from the bar, but actually, in hindsight, never to return, and spent three years at the Royal College and then a year at the National Opera Studio. <laughs> The legal world is a very different world to the music world. Um, when you take a case as a barrister, you can't give it up. Um, and there are very, very strict rules about, about um, continuing a case through to the end. That means a fairly unforgiving lifestyle. Um, and it's, it's also very stressful in ways that music can never be. Um, in, as a barrister, you have somebody's livelihood and often um, you know, liberty even in your hands. Music, on the other hand, taps into humanity as a whole. I love the fact that I deal on a daily basis with human emotion, but without individual people. I get to read beautiful poetry and sing amazing music. Um, I feel incredibly lucky and I'm glad that I chose the, this route rather than the legal one. <laughs> I think a, a really great singer should be able to sing anything, technically. Um, I think it's another issue as to whether your voice fits within whatever you're choosing to do. But even though I fit within a particular voice type, I'm still quite capable of singing Bach, for instance. I've just sung Matthew Passion, um, right up to modern day. And so um, whilst I, yes, I sing a lot of Wagner, Elga, Mahler, that kind of music, um, it, I, lo I also love the challenge of contemporary music. And I've sung a lot by um, the, a number of different modern composers, Weir, Berio, Andreessen, and also most recently, Cheryl Francis Hode, who has been writing music for me specifically. So I premiered a song cycle of hers, One Life Stand, in the summer. <laughs> I find particularly Brahms, interestingly, is my kind of composer of choice for song. There's something about the way he uses text and the depth which he allows me to use in my voice seem to marry up very nicely. Everyone. 